Welcome back. When we last left off, our friend Bilbo Baggins was lost deep under the ground following some tunnels and he finally settled by a lake. He found something and put it in his pocket. Do you remember what that was? As he crawled along, he found a metal ring. And thinking nothing more of it, he slipped it into his pocket. Last week, we also met Gollum, a creature who lives on a slimy rock island in the middle of that cold, deep underground lake. And Gollum was watching Bilbo when we left off. Gollum got into his boat and shot off from the island while Bilbo was sitting on the brink, altogether flummoxed and at the end of his way and his wits. Suddenly, up came Gollum and whispered and hissed, Bless us and splash us, my precious. I guess it is a choice feast. It is at least a tasty morsel. It'll make us Gollum. And when he said Gollum, he made a horrible swallowing noise in his throat. That is how he got his name, though he always called himself my precious. The hobbit jumped nearly out of his skin when the hiss came in his ears and he suddenly saw the pale eyes sticking out at them. Who are you? he said, thrusting his dagger in front of him. What is he, my precious? whispered Gollum, who always spoke to himself, though never having anyone else to speak to. This is what he had come to find out, for he was not really very hungry at the moment, only curious. Otherwise, he would have grabbed first and whispered afterwards. I am Mr. Bilbo Baggins and I have lost the dwarfs and I have lost the wizard and I don't know where I am and I don't want to know if only I can get away. What's he got in his hands is? said Gollum looking at the sword which he did not quite like. A sword blade which came out of Gondolin. Sss, said Gollum and became quite polite. Perhaps we sit here and chats with it a bit, see, my precious. It likes riddles. Perhaps he does. Does it? He was anxious to appear friendly at any rate for the moment. And until he found out more about the sword and the hobbit, whether he was quite alone really, whether he was good to eat, and whether Gollum was really hungry. Riddles were all he could think of. Asking them, sometimes guessing them, it had been the only game he had ever played with other funny creatures sitting in their holes that long, long ago before he lost all his friends and was driven away alone and crept down, down into the dark under the mountains. Very well, said Bilbo, who was anxious to agree until he found out more about the creature, whether he was quite alone, whether he was fierce or hungry, and whether he was a friend of the goblins. You ask first, he said, because he hadn't time to think of a riddle. So Gollum hissed. What? has roots as nobody sees, is taller than the trees. Up, up it goes, and yet never grows. Easy, said Bilbo. Mountain, I suppose. Does it guess easy? It must have a competition with us, my precious. If precious asks, and it doesn't answer, we eat it, my precious. If it asks us, and we don't answer, then we do what it wants, eh? We shows it the way out, yes. All right, said Bilbo, not daring to disagree and nearly bursting his brain to think of riddles that could save him from being eaten. 30 white horses on a red hill. First they champ, then they stamp, then they stand still. That was all he could think of. The idea of eating was rather on his mind. It was a rather old one too and Goblin knew the answer as well as you do. Chestnuts! Chestnuts! He hissed. Teeth! Teeth, my precious! But we had only six. Then he asked his second. Voiceless it cries, wingless flutters, toothless bites, mouthless mutters. Half a moment, cried Bilbo, who was still thinking uncomfortably about eating. Fortunately, he had once heard something rather like this before, and getting his wits back, he thought of the answer. Wind, of course, he said, and he was so pleased he made up one on the spot. This'll puzzle the nasty little underground creature, he thought. 
an eye of blue, an eye in a blue face saw an eye in a green face. That eye is like to this eye, said the first eye, but in low place, not in high place. said Gollum. He had been underground a long time and was forgetting this sort of thing. But just as Bilbo was beginning to hope that the wretch would not be able to answer, Gollum brought up memories of ages and ages before when he lived with his grandmother in a hole in a bank by the river. Sss, sss, my precious, he said. Sun on the daisies, it means. It does. But these ordinary above ground, everyday sort of riddles were tiring him. Also, they reminded him of days when he had been less lonely and sneaky and nasty, and that put him out of a temper. What more, they made him hungry. So this time he tried something a little bit more difficult and a little bit more unpleasant. It cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills, and empty holes it fills. It comes first, in follows after, ends life, kills laughter. Unfortunately for Gollum, Bilbo had heard that sort of thing before and the answer was all around him anyway. Dark, he said, without even scratching his head or putting on his thinking cap. A box without hinges, keys, or lid, yet golden treasure is inside hid, he asked, to gain time, until he could think of a really hard one. This he thought a dreadfully easy chestnut, though he had not asked in the usual words, but it proved a nasty poser for Gollum. He hissed to himself, and still he did not answer. He whispered and spluttered. After some while, Bilbo became impatient. Well, what is it? He said. The answer's not a kettle boiling over, as you seem to think from the noise you're making. Give us a chance. Let us give us a chance, my precious. Well, said Bilbo, after giving him a long chance, what about your guess? But suddenly, Gollum remembered thieving from nests long ago and sitting on the riverbank teaching his grandmother, teaching his grandmother to suck. Eggs is, he hissed. Eggs is it is, he then asked. Alive without breath, as cold as death, never thirsty, ever drinking, all in mail. Never clinking. He also, in his turn, thought this was a dreadfully easy one because he was always thinking of the answer. But he could not remember anything better at the moment. He was so flustered by the egg question. All the same, it was a poser for poor Bilbo, who had never had anything to do with water if he could help it. I imagine you know the answer, of course, or can guess it as easy as winking, since you are sitting comfortably at home and have not the danger of being eaten to disturb your thinking. Bilbo sat and cleared his throat once or twice, but no answer came. After a while, Gollum began to hiss with pleasure to himself. It is nice, my precious. Is it juicy? Is it scrumptiously crunchable? He began to peer at Bilbo out of the darkness. Have a moment, said the hobbit, shivering. I give you a good long chance just now. It must make haste, haste, said Gollum, beginning to climb out of his boat onto the shore to get at Bilbo. But when he put his long, webby foot in the water, a fish jumped out in fright and fell on Bilbo's toes. Ugh, he said. It's cold and clammy. And so he guessed. Fish, fish, he said. It is fish. Gollum was dreadfully disappointed, but Bilbo asked another riddle as quick as ever he could so that Gollum had to get back into his boat and think. Hmm. No legs lay on one leg, two legs set near on three legs, four legs got some. It was really not the right time for this riddle, but Bilbo was in a hurry. Gollum might have had some trouble guessing it if he had asked it at another time. As it was, talking of fish, no legs was not so difficult, and after that the rest was easy. Fish on a table, man sitting at his table sitting on a stool and the cat has the bones. That of course is the answer and Gollum soon gave it. Then he thought the time had come to ask something hard and horrible. This is a thing all things devours. Birds and beasts, trees and flowers. Gnaws iron, bites steel. Grinds home hard stones to meal. 
slays king and ruins town and beats a high mountain down. Poor Bilbo sat in the dark thinking of all the horrible names of all the giants and ogres he'd ever heard tall, told of in tales, but not one of them had done all these things. He had a feeling the answer was quite different and that he ought to know it, but he could not think of it. He began to get frightened, and that is bad for thinking. Gollum began to get out of his boat. He flapped into the water and paddled to the bank. Bilbo could see his eyes coming toward him. His tongue seemed to stick in his mouth. He wanted to shout out, give me more time, give me more time. But all that came out with a sudden squeal was, time, time. Bilbo was saved by pure luck. For that, of course, was the answer. Gollum was disappointed once more, and now he was getting angry and also tired of the game. It had made him very hungry indeed. This time, he did not go back to the boat. He sat down in the dark by Bilbo. That made the hobbit most dreadfully uncomfortable and scattered his wits. It's got to ask us a question, my precious. Yes, yes, yes. Just one more guess. Yes, yes said Gollum. But Bilbo simply could not think of any questions with that nasty wet cold thing sitting next to him and pawing and poking him. He scratched himself. He pinched himself. Still, he could not think of anything. Ask us! Ask us! said Gollum. Bilbo pinched himself and slapped himself. He gripped on his little sword and even felt in his pocket with his other hand. There he found the ring he'd picked up in the passage and forgotten about. What have I got in my pocket? he said aloud. He was talking to himself, but Gollum thought it was a riddle, and he was frightfully upset. Not fair, not fair, he hissed. It isn't fair, my precious, is it, to ask it what it's got in its nasty little pockets is. Bilbo, seeing what had happened and having nothing better to ask, stuck to his question. What have I got in my pocket, he said louder. <laughs> hissed Gollum. It must give us three guesses, my precious, three Guesses. Very well. Guess away, said Bilbo. Hanses, said Gollum. Wrong, said Bilbo, who had luckily just taken his hand out again. Guess again. <laughs> said Gollum, more upset than ever. He thought of all the things he kept in his own pockets. Fish bones, goblin's teeth, wet shells, a bit of bat wing, a sharp stone to sharpen his fangs on, and other nasty things. He tried to think what other people kept in their pockets. Knife, he said at last. Wrong, said Bilbo, who had lost his some time ago. Last guess. Now Gollum was in a much worse state than Bilbo had asked him the egg question. He hissed and spluttered and rocked himself backwards and forwards and slapped his feet on the floor and wriggled and squirmed, but still he did not dare to waste his last guess. Come on, said Bilbo, I'm waiting. He tried to sound bold and cheerful, but he did not feel at all sure how the game was going to end, whether Gollum guessed right or not. Time's up, he said. String or nothing, shrieked Gollum, which was not quite fair working in two guesses at once. Both wrong, cried Bilbo, very much relieved. And he jumped at once to his feet, put his back to the nearest wall and held out his little sword. He knew, of course, that the riddle game was a sacred and immense antiquity, and even wicked creatures were afraid to cheat when they played at it. But he felt he could not trust the slimy thing to keep any promise in a pinch. Any excuse would do for him to slide out of it. And after all, that last question had not been a genuine riddle according to ancient laws. But at any rate, Gollum did not at once attack him. He could see the sword in Bilbo's hand. He was still shivering and whispering. At last, Bilbo could wait no longer. Well, he said, what about your promise? I want to go. You must show me the way. Did we say so, precious? Show the nasty little baggins the way out? Yes, yes. But what has it got in its pockets is, eh? Not string, precious, but not nothing. Oh no, Gollum. Never you mind, said Bilbo. A promise is a promise. Cross it is impatient, precious, hissed Gollum. But it must wait, yes, it must. We can't go up to the tunnel so hasty. We must go and get some things first, yes, things to help us. Well, hurry up, said Bilbo, relieved to think of Gollum going away. He thought he was just making an excuse and did not mean to come back. What was Gollum talking about? What useful thing could be kept out on the dark lake? But he was wrong. Gollum did mean to come back. He was angry now and hungry, 
and he was a miserable, wicked creature, and already he had a plan. Not far away was his island, on which Bilbo knew nothing, which, in which, in his hiding place, he kept a few wretched oddments and one very beautiful thing. Very beautiful, very wonderful. He had a ring, a golden ring, a precious ring. My birthday present, he whispered to himself, as he had often done in the endless dark days. That's what we want now, yes, we want it. He wanted it because it was a ring of power, and if you slipped that ring onto your finger, you were invisible. Only in the full sunlight could you be seen, and then only by your shadow, and that would be shaky and faint. My birthday present, it came to me on my birthday, my precious. So he had always said to himself, but who knows how Gollum came by that present ages ago in the old days when such rings were still at large in the world. Perhaps even the master who ruled them could not have said, Gollum used to wear it at first till it tired him. Then he kept it in a pouch next to its skin until it galled him. And now usually he hid it in a hole in the rock on his island and was always going back to look at it. And still sometimes he put it on when he could not bear to be parted from it any longer or when he was very, very hungry and tired of fish. Then he would creep along dark passages looking for stray goblins. He might even venture into places where the torches were lit and made his eyes blink and smart for he would be safe Oh yes, quite safe. No one would see him. No one would notice him till he had his fingers on their throat. Only a few, year, a few hours ago he had worn it and caught a small goblin imp. How it squeaked! He still had a bone or two left to gnaw, but he wanted something softer. Quite safe, yes, he whispered to himself. It won't see us, will it, precious? No, it won't see us. And its nasty little sword will be useless, yes. Quite. That was what was in his wicked little mind as he slipped suddenly from Bilbo's side and flapped back to his boat and went off into the dark. Bilbo thought he had heard the last of him. Still, he waited a while for he had no idea how to find his way out alone. And we'll stop there for today. Today we're going to look at some pictures of the objects from the riddles and we're going to review the ring. I'll see you next time.